Hey, come on. What do I need? Mean? Because for the God, this is the time of comes to the world. Yeah. Well, we need you. For the God, every minute, every hour of the day. Yes. For the God, we just love to call your name. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Just tell him what you want. Yes. For the God, we know it's not that easy. For the God, we praise for the one that might have been on affliction. We are praying for each friend for the God we are in for. Lift them up. Because for the God, it just hurts when we lose our love. They always say, you can be in need. You might not feel hard for a minute, but it feels it's near enough for the God. It just help us. Yes. Help us. Yes. Oh, 
praise God for this another day's journey that He has blessed us, He has kept us, even when we could not keep ourselves. Amen. Amen. I, we better be glad that He says we're two or three are gathered in His name because we're close to that. Amen. But yet we're here and we come to worship, we come to give God all of the praise because He is worthy to be praised. Thank you. 
those who are here, those on the sound of voice, those who are even watching, those who are pray that they can be here, God, we thank that even that those who are watching are faithful in their call. So, God, we come, and once again, we give you the praise of the Lord. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. And said, Amen. We're going to have our congregation going on today. Congregation of
Everything. 
the Wilbur Sims as well. We're going to prepare to take our tithes and offerings. We ask that you would give every one of the Bibles who are watching, that you can still can give. Amen. Cash out the TV. See you on that dollar sign from Giving Fox. Those who give by their offering, we thank you again for what you have given. Amen.
that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. This verse reflects a deep longing for the divine presence and intervention from God. We live in a time, we live in a period that we need God more than anything else today. We sing songs like, if you ever needed the Lord, that you sure enough need Him now. I don't know about you, but we need the Lord. The church needs the Lord. The families need the Lord. Amen. Our nation needs the Lord. And so we are here and we are crying and we are looking for a divine intervention. We want God to step in. We want God to do what he said that he's going to do. You know the devil is busy. The devil will do everything that he can to decoy you, distract you, and try to get you to fall off of the journey that you are on. And we got to hear the hearts that echo the sentiment of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 1. Because it is a cry, it is a plea for divine intervention in our lives. My brothers and sisters, can I say this to you today? Stop sending the, the Lord trying to send God to everybody else's house until he gets to your house. Right. Until he fixes what you need. We all need intervention. We all need God to step in our lives to really that the heavens will come down. Amen. We, we need Him to intervene and not only to intervene, but to make everything all right. You know that He can make everything all right. Yes, sir. This text reminds us that we, what we long for is not a historical remembrance. It's not just looking back, but a new reality and a new encounter with Christ. The cry of longing is found here by Isaiah. The prophet expressed the yearning for the presence of God, God, I need you in my life. God, I need you. Have you ever said to the Lord, I need you right now? Have you ever said to the Lord, Lord, if you don't come, I don't know what I'm going to do. You might have been in the hospital room. You could have been in the courtroom. You could have been in the Lord. You might have been on your job. And the fact is that there comes a time when you will find yourself crying out to the Lord that you want the Lord's presence. I want His presence. I need Him. I need Him in my home. Even when I'm driving on the street, I need the Lord to protect me. Do I have any witnesses here? The word that the scripture uses, the word when conveys a sense of urgency that this is a, a, an emergency, a, uh, I need a desire for God to break through the barriers yes. that separate the divine from the human. And my brothers and sisters, we reflect on our lives. Do we share the journey for a profound encounter with God? When was the last time you told somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. How many times do you talk about how many times in a conversation have you stopped and said, let me tell you about my God and what he can do. So many times we find ourselves talking about everything else but the Lord. And we need to stop acting like we only need the Lord when we get in trouble with things that are happening around us. We need the Lord every day of our lives. Do I have some witnesses here? I need the Lord. I need the Lord. When I lay down at night, I need the Lord. When I, when, I, when, when, when I walk out the house, I need the Lord. Do I have some witnesses here? You don't know what you're going to need. 
sir. We can get out the door. But if God is with you, I said if God is with you, uh -huh. everything will be all, all right. My brothers and sisters, we know that. Have you shared with somebody? When was the last time you asked somebody? When was the last time you said anything good about the church? Instead of talking, come on and help me somebody here. You will need the Lord sooner than you think. Yeah. Come on and help me. Are we desperate for his presence in our individual and collective journeys? Yeah. We need to recognize, amen, the need. The prophet's cry acknowledges the inadequacy of human efforts. You can't do this by yourself. You, you might, you, no matter how smart that you think you are, no matter how much you might have, you still need the Lord. Matter of fact, if I don't know where it's going to be, what's not for the Lord, you would have anything you had. Right. I wish I had some witnesses here. You would even have a mind or a body. But thank God that God has done what he's done for us. He has prepared us. Amen. And so I know that it is not me. It is not what I have. But everything is about God. It's about God. I get weak sometimes. You get weak sometimes. Come on and help me here. Sometimes you might want to fall along the way. But thank God that God walks right beside us. Right. We thank God that, 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 that David knew that when he said that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He was saying that I've got somebody that will take care of me. I've got somebody that will provide my every need. The mountains, he talks about tripling, amen, for God symbolizes the recognition of his majesty and his power. Right. Amen. It, it, it recognizes that God is above everything else. That we have all power in his hand. In our lives, mountains of challenges, obstacles, and sins can only be overcome through that divine intervention. If God would help us, amen, we need God. Here we come to terms with our limitations and the need for God to move mightily in our lives. Amen. We are weak, but he is strong. I said we are weak, yeah, but he's not going to preach anyway, y'all. They, they, we, we are weak, but he is strong. The incarnation of the author of the rendering, as Christians, we celebrate the fulfillment of this longing in the person of Jesus Christ. That's when we ask God to intervene. When we ask God to come, we're saying we need the Lord in our lives. The incarnation represents the ultimate rendering of the heaven. God came down in human form, dwelled among us to bridge the gap between the divine and the earthly. He was the one that connected that which was redisconnected. You know we were disconnected, but they are from Jesus because he was God and man back together again. It's like a electrical plug. When it falls out of the wall, the light doesn't work no more. But when you plug it back in, do I have some witnesses here? God is reconnected. Thank God we're reconnected. Thank God Jesus has taken us and plugged us back into the power source. Right. Who is God? Preach hard away. Amen. 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 He came down and he dwelt among us. He bridged the gap. The mountains tremble at the birth of our Savior. How does the reality of Christ's incarnation impact our understanding even of Isaiah's cry? What he does is he invites God's presence. And while we recognize the, the, the historical fulfillment of Isaiah, Isaiah's longing in Jesus, amen, the cry of divine intervention is not just a one-time event. You need God every day. Sir. Every hour. I wish I had somebody here. There's no time in your life that you did it all by yourself. Do I have some witnesses here? God was involved. Can I get some? I remember they 
when they 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 when they used to uh, uh, talk and testify in the church. Y'all do know that it was a time when folks testified in the church that they would say that he woke me up this morning. Right. He started me on this day's right. journey. I wish I had somebody. Right. If we testify, we would talk about Amen. How good he has been to us. And somebody would say he brought me from a mighty
shake the mountains from over all of us. He said the foundation of the nation was shaken from. So we shake the foundation of God. But the fields are needed to be turned upside down. And if every once in a while it will be shaken in your life, it will be turned upside down. So we will deal with this. So remember that it didn't give up hope. They didn't turn around in the house. They didn't walk away.
bitch. I know. What's the most in it? Come on. What's the most in it? I know. So you're going to look at me like, yeah. Well, she said she'd like to be invited. Pray for me, baby.